Hello my friends and welcome to part 5 of my Truly Victorian corset making tutorial. In this part we're going to go over how to finish the top edge of my corset. Materials that I'm going to be using are, besides my corset, Venice lace, extra wide double fold bias tape which is half an inch wide, matching thread, I've got my pins, and I'm ready to go. So the first step that I need to do is to baste the top edge of my corset. So I'm just going to put down a stitch right on top. If you notice, this basting stitch isn't very clean. It's close to the top of the edge and that's all right. This is just to make sure that my material doesn't really go anywhere when I sew down the bias tape. I also don't want the stitching to show through or poke out from underneath the bias tape either. So that's why it's a little bit closer to the top. This is also a good time to trim and neaten up the edges of your corset if you need to. So the next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to take my bias tape and my lace and I'm going to kind of play around and try and decide on how I want to design this. Do I want the bias tape sewn on first with the lace sewn on top? Or do I want to sew the lace on first and have the bias tape on top so that you can see both colors? Actually, I kind of like that. Okay, so that determines that the next step will be to sew on the lace. I'm just going to fold this over just a bit just to make sure that the edges are neat. I'm also going to be putting this a little bit lower, kind of right below where my basting line is, so that uh, more of the lace will be shown after I put on the bias tape. I'm also going to be moving this design over so that it doesn't cover up the grommet hole here. So I'm just going to pin that on and then I will sew it down. So now that that's all pinned down, I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and baste across the top. Now once you have the lace pinned onto the second side of your corset, it's a good idea to match it up to the edge of the other half of the corset to make sure that your lace is symmetrical. That's what I did here and that matches up pretty nicely. Once I sew it down, if I need to make any kind of adjustments, I'll just carefully take a seam ripper to it and probably hand tack the lace down. Check out this side. Yeah, that's pretty darn close. Now that I've confirmed the positioning of that second half, I'll go ahead and sew it down. The next step is to sew on the bias tape. Now this kind of bias tape is double fold and what that means is that it's a length or a width of fabric that has its edges folded in and then folded once more in half to give really clean edges. So to put it on, I'm going to unfold it and unfold it again and I'm going to pin this on matching the edges but I'm going to leave a length of the bias tape protruding past this edge of the corset. This way I can fold it under toward the back when I flip the bias tape over after I sew it down. Okay, so now that I've finished pinning along the edge, I'm going to cut past where that ends. I'm going to switch my thread to match and then I'm going to sew along the fold. So what I'm going to do now after I've sewn that down is I'm just going to be flipping the bias tape over to the back. Now on the edge I'm just going to fold it under and then fold That way the edge looks finished as well. Go ahead and pin that in place. And then you'll go ahead and flip over the rest of the bias tape. Now you're going to do the same thing on this edge where you fold this side under 
and fold the top over. So at this point, one thing you could do is pin your bias tape down and sew on this side and secure the bias tape on the inside. However, that's going to give you a stitch, a visible stitch on the front of your corset. Now I don't want to do that, so what I'm going to do instead is a technique called stitch in the ditch, where I'm actually going to be pinning on this side of the fabric. So what I'm going to do to get this started is I'm going to pin right in where this seam is, like that. And on the inside, I'm going to make sure that I caught the fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and do that all the way across. So now that's all done, making sure that the pins have caught the inside edge. This part's a little bit tricky, and the reason that this technique is called stitch in the ditch is because you're going to be stitching right inside, well, the ditch of the area between your bias tape and the fabric that it's sewn onto. So you're just going to have to start really slowly. And again, just have patience. So once you get this going, don't be afraid to stop and start as much as you need and pull the pins out as you go. As with most things in this project, this again is precision work. Now that I've finished stitching in the ditch, you can see how the seam is barely noticeable. However, on the inside, it didn't catch in some places. And that happens. It's nothing to worry about. So if it does happen, I'll just go back in and whip stitch and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Okay, so basically just attach the lining and slip your needle through the edge of the bias tape. This step is a little bit time consuming, but should you choose to, you could use a whip stitch to finish the entire back side of the bias tape. This way you avoid any kind of seam showing on the front. And I'm all done! That is what the finished edge is going to look like. The next step is to insert the boning. In part 6 of my video tutorial series, I will explain how to cut the boning and size it and finally insert it into the corset. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this series so far. And if you'd like to see more of my work, you can check me out at facebook.com slash Cosplay. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter. So until next time, bye!